Frank A. Gregg. My rank is uh, Colonel, retired. I went into Normandy first. On, on, uh, we took off on the 5th of June, 1944. And we, it, to me, uh, this is an interesting point. We flew westward out of uh, England and for one hour, and then we passed over a light ship down in the Atlantic, and it flashed a signal to the lead pilot in the formation I was in. And we then turned and went right, to, uh, turned and t two back to, toward Normandy, and we flew for another hour back to uh, our drop zones in Normandy. Well, first of all, there was a herd of cattle on a knoll, and by a knoll, it was a, an area that was raised above the uh, water level, and the, all the cattle were up there on the grazing on, the, on that knoll. Still very dark, black, you couldn't take. I could see, the, uh, well, I could hear the cattle first, and then I could see them a little bit when I got um, very close to them. They were all docile. And uh, so I knew that those cattle had a way of getting out to that knoll to graze. And the, uh, I, because dairy cat, these were all dairy cattle. and. The, uh, and I knew, having been uh, raised on a farm, I knew that they were not just wandering around all over the place. They came, I knew they came from a farmyard and somewhere very close, and then they were up, then grazing in that, on that particular uh, area, the knoll. So, I knew there's a farmyard somewhere close by. So I then started looking for the farmyard, which by that time, it was getting light enough, I could see the outline of a house. And, uh, and I said, that's where those cattle came from, and uh, which happened to be correct. And I went to the house, <coughs> to the house, uh, first of all, I had to find out where am I. I had no idea that I was even close to where I was supposed to be or, uh, or that, that, that my, uh, my objective, that is where I was assigned to go to, which happened to be a railroad uh, bridge. And, uh, I never saw the railroad bridge. It, I just, it um, didn't come up in any thing, even after it got daylight, I could not see it. I could not recognize it as the objective I had been assigned. So I would then, my next move was to fight the Germans wherever they were and uh, which is what I did. The first thing I needed to do, where am I? I still had no idea. I had picked up I had a total of 19 paratroopers in the flooded area, and, but that didn't help us any because they didn't know where they were either. So I got, uh, I knocked on the door a Frenchman came to the door, took one look at me. I was wringing wet uh, all over because first place I had to, I was lying down to get out of my harness and that I uh, was completely uh, drenched from head to foot. So, but it, that didn't bother me, and it, it, but it bothered them when they looked at me and uh, I was, just outside the front door of the house, 
and they uh, took one look at me. I didn't look as if I had come to liberate anybody. So they slammed the door, or the man slammed the door, and, uh, and, and I, uh, well, that ended my conversation with him. So I went back across the little road to my men. They were behind a hedgerow. I put them all behind a hedgerow. And I said, I'm going back. I'm going into that house. And, and I may have to shoot the, the lock off the door to get in. If you hear me shoot, uh, hear me uh, any firing, come on over and because I'll need all the help I can get. And so that, I put them behind the hedgerow again. I went across, I took my rifle and banged on the door again. And this time a girl came to the door. And I would say she was uh, oh, maybe 18, 20 years old. And so I stepped into the door and put uh, so she couldn't slam the door and in my face and she didn't try she there was a table in the middle of the room with a candle bur uh, burning on it and that was uh, I knew would be enough light that if I pulled my map out she could show me where we were on the map so I said that's what I'll do. So I went into the room, over to the table, I reached in my pocket, pulled out the map, spread it out on the table, water running off of it, and, and, uh, and I uh, gave this look like this and, and kind of a circle with my fingers. And, she took one look at the map and said, Ungerville. And in a minute she said, Ungerville, I knew exactly where we were. So I was very happy to find that out. I was at least in the area of the drop zone where I was supposed to be. So I uh, was, when, as soon as I got the word Ungerville, knew where we were. Then I went, had to get my men, which were across the road behind the hedgerow, and they were uh, uh, waiting to find out what I found out. So I told them, "Okay, I know where we are, and that let's, uh, and I know where I'm supposed to go. So let's get moving." Well, after we, we spent six weeks in Normandy, and we were moved uh, since the parachute units were not assigned to any particular uh, major unit, uh, we were moved around wherever we were needed, and uh, which was places that had been bypassed by the major units. And uh, so we had to clean up those units, uh, that, those uh, areas so the other troops could come in without running into enemy uh, in, in that particular area. We were six uh, weeks in Normandy, and after six weeks, we were pulled back, the whole division was pulled back to England to get ready for the next operation. And the next operation happened to be Market Garden, and which was uh, in what is known now as the Netherlands, but we call, it was still Holland in those uh, days and so I'm gonna to refer to it as Holland. But that was the next operation. Holland was a totally different operation from Normandy. First place, it was in the middle of the afternoon and I could see everything and there were no Germans in my immediate area and until I 
moved out from the little village of Angerville and I got and I uh, had joined my battalion commander and we put our troops together so then we attacked the Germans who were at the on the edge of the village and we uh, had a pretty good little four of size force at that point and I was able to push them back uh, to from where they came from and uh, and then I but my battalion commander said I want you to go over to this road he pointed it to the road on the ground on on the map and also he could we, I could see it and we went over, he said, take your men and go over to that road and you go up that road as far as you can go. And I have a feeling that the Germans who are right here in front firing on us will feel somewhat uh, cut off and they will start pulling back and which actually happened. That's the way it worked. So went back, started up the road again. And when I got about uh, another 50 yards, uh, they were all, uh, well, uh, all the bad things broke loose because there were more Germans further up. And so we had to divert our attention from the relatively few Germans we were fighting against to a lot more of them who had come down because they doing what I was doing. They were, where's all that firing coming from? And so they were, they were coming down the road toward me and we uh, ran together and uh, then that stopped all the, didn't stop the, it stopped the movement, not the firing, because they were firing just as much as my people were. But uh, I heard a tank coming up behind me. And I said, oh my gosh, here comes a tank. And we had nothing but rifles and a couple of machine guns. But the uh, nothing that would take care of a tank. Well, as soon as it got a little bit closer, I saw it was one of our tanks, an American tank, that had come across the beach and had made it up to that point. So I said to the I, I signaled the tank command, signaled the tank to stop. I wanted to tell them something. So I jumped up on the back of the tank and, and I, I said to the tank commander, I said, you see that uh, area right up there in the front of you where this road here runs into that road and he, he could understand what I was talking about. And he said, yes. So I said, throw a 75 millimeter shell in there. And I said, and then I will be sure that they don't get to your tank. I'll be right on you. And so oh, that's what we did. He slammed a 75 millimeter shell into the area in front of him at the junction where the other Germans had congregated and were shooting and were firing at us. But after he put in, a, oh, I think he put in about maybe two or three 75 millimeter shells in right into the position. And of course, that broke it up as far as those people were concerned. And they started pulling out and getting back out of the area. And uh, I mean back out of the area, but get further back away from where I was with my uh, riflemen and the, uh, the uh, I then went on in and got the position 
at the road junction well, where the Germans were and they were firing at me there. So I captured that position and, uh, and, and that was as far as I thought I should go because my battalion commander, I had already passed up where he was on the, on my right side coming along and I had moved on up and the Germans that were in front of him started to withdrawing. And so I decided, well, I'm going about as far as I can go without some help. So I'm going to hold this position. 